In the first video, I go over how to 3D print a motorcycle fairing using a 3D printer. We go over design, we print it, we put it all together and we hate it. Then we went back, we went and designed it. We printed it again, we put it all together. And to be honest, not really a huge fan of it. So we made this. This is version 3.45, yada, yada, yada. It's like, there's so many different versions. I have lost count, to be honest. I have been on my computer a lot designing and this design is so much more simpler. And I think it kind of completes my first idea of what I wanted in a fairing, which is to look fast while standing still. So I want to create a mold of this bad boy. And you might be wondering, why not just carbon skin like I did with the seat? Here's the thing with carbon skinning a 3D print. Now, carbon skinning has a lot of positive, but it does have some serious drawbacks. The first thing with carbon skinning is that it doesn't add any real structural integrity to the 3D print. So if you want a lightweight, strong fairing, carbon skinning isn't exactly going to cut it. Second, 3D prints, especially large ones like this fairing, can warp over time and carbon skinning won't exactly fix that. Lastly, a proper mold lets you create multiple fairings. Multiple fairings. And it is way more durable, it's stronger, and the finish just ends up being so much better when you create a mold. So instead of just wrapping a plastic piece with carbon, we're making a full composite fairing that is legit race ready or road worthy. So we 3D printed the fairing and it's ready to go, but we have to create the mold and you have to follow a certain amount of steps in order to create this mold properly because we want a clean, professional looking fairing for this motorcycle. So we have to do this the right way. This is the plan. One, sand this thing until it's smoother than my excuses for bending too much on motorcycle parts. Two, fill all the gaps with Bondo. Three, sand again because I literally hate myself. Four, spray some primer to prep it for the mold. Five, sand the primer till it's glossy. Six, apply the mold material. And seven, reinforce it with fiberglass so it doesn't turn to dust the moment I touch it. Sounds really simple, right? All right, let's get back to the actual steps of making this mold. Before I even think about applying Bondo, we gotta sand the 3D print. Why? Because 3D print parts have layer lines. They have these tiny ridges and sometimes little blobs or stringy bits, especially when you are lazy and you don't dry your filament like I do, you get little strings. And if you slap some Bondo straight onto that, it may not stick to it, especially because I'm using a PET G and it's a glossy PET G. So it might not stick to it properly. I'm basically setting myself up for failure. Sandy gives the Bondo something to really grip on. It's like Velcro. Get like a little good foothold. It also smooths out these like high spots and we're not just gonna bury problems under more problems. So if we sand it, it should be good. Is it fun? Absolutely not. It is not fun at all. This sucks. This is hours and hours of work. It is awful, but it's one of those things where you have to do it right or it's going to suck later and it sucks to suck. So it's kind of an important step. All right. Now that the fairing is sanded and smoother than my search history for motorcycle parts, I don't need it's time for some Bondo. And the goal here isn't to cake it on. You don't want to lay it on super, super thick like I do here because it sucks to sand Bondo. We're just pretty much trying to fill in the layer lines. We're trying to smooth out any sort of imperfections. We're trying to create this solid, even surface to eventually pull a mold from. I'm using just some Bondo from AutoZone or something. I can't even remember where I bought it. And I'm mixing it up with just enough harder to give me a few workable minutes, but not so much that it cures mid spread because it sucks. Ask me how I know. Go ahead, ask me because I did it. 
Anyways, when applying it, I'm just really trying to press it into the surface instead of just wiping it across. That helps really fill in these low spots, especially around curves and edges. Thin layers are your friend here. Once this cures, we'll sand it again because of course you have to sand it. We're gonna do something that no one wants to hear, but I gotta say it. This whole process, it's a nasty, nasty loop. First, you sand, then you bondo, then you sand again and you repeat that process. You sand, bondo, sand, bondo, sand, bondo. You think it's good. You hold it up to the light and you say, wow, this looks perfect. And then you hit it with a guide coat of primer and boom, every flaw you, you miss just stares right back at you like, hey buddy, remember me, you idiot? You didn't sand me. And that's just the nature of it. Sand, bondo, sand, bondo, sand, bondo. And then you primer it and it says, hey, you are dumb. Each round of sanding just reveals new imperfection. Each pass of Bondo brings you one step closer to that surface that actually is mold ready. And it's tedious, it's dusty, and it tests your patience. But if you want a mold that pulls clean, this is where it happens. So you gotta grab some good sandpaper and I'll throw some good sandpaper in the comments. You gotta grab a solid playlist and maybe just maybe you need to reevaluate some life choices along the way while you sand your fairing because we're in for a loop for a long, long time. Now that the surface is looking good or at least as good enough to emotionally move on, it's time to create the flange. And the flange is the extended border around the fairing that gives us room to clamp, to seal, and to later trim the mold. It also gives the resin a nice flat edge to run out during layup. Basically, it's the frame around a painting. There's a bunch of ways to do it. You can use a foam board, acrylic sheets, MDF. What we're gonna be doing or using is a plastic poster board. It's readily available. I can find it at the store and it's pretty cheap. We just wanna make sure that everything is centered up. We wanna make sure it's leveled. And then the flange gives me a nice two to three inch border all the way around. And of course, you'll have to seal it off so resin doesn't sneak underneath and ruin this mold. So before I jump into the fillet work, I decided that I needed to actually spray this with a 2K primer. Why? Because when I was looking over my fairing, I realized that there were more imperfections. Remember that part that I said sand, primer, sand, primer, sand, primer? Well, it's coming back to haunt me. And I want a surface as clean and polished as possible before I lay down any gel coat. I end up spraying a 2K primer and it does two things. It fills in any last microscopic scratches from sanding and it gives me a uniform surface that I could wet sand and polish to a smooth, almost glossy finish. This step isn't technically required, but if you want a mold that pulls with minimal texture and saves you hours of sanding your final part, this is totally worth it. Once your primer's cured, I'll come back and we're gonna do what we're gonna do. We're gonna sand specifically wet sand, and then we're going to polish. So we're not gonna primer it again, not sand, primer, sand, primer, sand, primer. It's gonna be sand and then polish and polish some more. We're gonna polish it up like it owes me money because I am poor from buying motorcycle parts and also from buying all this Joko stuff. After spraying the 2K primer, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the fillet, which is basically just a fancy way of saying we're smoothing out the corners with, with clay. That transition between your part and the flange, if it's a sharp 90 degree, it's gonna be a weak spot in the mold and a absolute nightmare to lay fiberglass into. So we add clay to round that out. Smooth curves equals happy molds. I like using non-drying modeling clay because it's easy to shape and it's pretty easy to clean up. You just roll it up like a sausage and you press it into the edge and then press it in with your finger or radius tool to get a nice consistent curve. You don't need perfection, but close is good. It's tedious, but trust me, your mold and honestly your sanity during laying up will thank you. Next up, honey wax. We're gonna be doing about five layers of honey wax. And all you gotta do is spread it on, wait about 15 minutes till it dries up, grab a microfiber towel, 
and then wipe it off. It is very easy. Once that's done, we'll go ahead and spray some PVA. This is just a mold release. So once we get our gel coat on, it'll be a lot easier to pull the mold off. Now it's time to lay down the gel coat and make this thing official. Gel coat is the first layer of the mold and it really sets the tone for the entire surface finish. Whatever texture is on this layer will transfer directly onto your final part. So the goal here is a smooth, even application. For this project, I'm using gel coat gun from gelcoder.com. They sent it over and honestly, it's been a game changer. Super easy to use, great automation, and it lays gel coat down way more consistently than any other gel coat Gun. Big thanks to them sending this out. I'm spraying on gel coat from fiberglass.com. It's just an orange gel coat and I am aiming for the magic zone of around 18 to 22 mils. That's about the thickness of a business card. I like to go in light passes, usually two or three passes, letting each one tack up a bit before adding the next. This helps avoid any sort of runs and it keeps everything looking super clean. And of course, I cannot say this enough. This gel coat stuff smells so strong. Wear proper protection. Ventilate your space if you're gonna do this indoors. I would suggest honestly doing it outdoors. And do not, do not, do not rush it. Once this cures, we'll move on to the fiberglass and we'll start building the mold. Now that the gel coat is tacky, we're gonna dive into the fiberglass layup. And this is where the mold starts to come to life. I always start with a thin first layer of fiberglass. For me, that usually is a lightweight mat or cloth, something that's really gonna conform to the curves and sticks down nice and tight. The goal here isn't strength, it's just to lock everything in without disturbing the gel coat. Think of it like laying a foundation. Once the first layer is on and cured, I move on to layers two and three which are much heavier fiberglass mats. And this is where we're building up the actual strength of the mold. Each layer gets fully saturated with resin and I'm working it in with a brush and fiberglass roller to make sure that there are no air bubbles hiding underneath. You don't want any dry spots or loose patches. If something lifts, it's gonna come back to haunt you when you demold. Between layers, I let the resin get tacky, not fully cured. That way the layers bond chemically and become one solid piece. If it does fully cure, all you have to do is sand it and you're good to go. Once all three layers are down and cured, the mold should be rigid, durable, and ready for cleanup and demolding. Well, it's messed up. One of my philosophies in life in general is learn by doing. And that's taken me to a lot of places in life. And it's allowed me to really build some cool things and to mess up some things. And messing up is what I did with this mold. It is not usable at all. The issue is, is I should have done a split mold. I 3D printed it, got everything ready, smoothed it out, made it look perfect. And then I gel coated it and wrapped it in fiberglass. The issue is I can't get the 3D print out. It is quote unquote, actually quote, mechanically locked. You cannot get the 3D print out. So what we have to do is we have to make a split mold. Now a split mold is a split down the middle of the mold. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna make a split mold. Let's get into it.
Well, you think I would learn, and I didn't, because our split mold is a failure. It will not work. In theory, if I didn't have the fairing where it came back in on the headlight, it would work. But since I had the fairing come in and it has like a little lip, when I made the split mold and I do a carbon infusion, that carbon piece is gonna be inside the split mold. And when I try to split the mold in half from the carbon part, it's gonna wanna pull apart the fairing when I pull the split mold apart. So it's not gonna work. Now, I'm not quitting. I'm not quitting, I'm not giving up. I ain't doing it. What we need to do is we need to make a three part mold. So you know what, you're getting all of it. You got the single stage mold piece, you got the two, the split mold. Now you're getting a three stage split mold. Who knows, maybe we'll get to the four or five stage split mold, whatever it's called. But what I am gonna do is I have to 3D print everything. And this time I actually designed the flange directly onto the fairing. So when I put the tape on and the plastic bag over, it already has that flange. Now, I wish I can put everything in this video, but unfortunately it's gonna be a part two or there's gonna be a part two to this video because this honestly took way longer than I expected. This thing almost took two months to make. Now, usually when I'm working on the motorcycle or the Porsche, I try to work on one thing at a time. And that's why I really haven't posted many videos lately because I have been super focused on getting this mold done. And honestly, I failed. So I'm gonna 3D print everything. I'm going to gel coat everything all over again and hopefully it works out. Be on the lookout for part two because it should be coming out hopefully soon. All right guys, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.